Hey, friend old Steve here. Well, Larson's here too. <laughs> I told you you'd be in one of these GFW reviews. Anyways, welcome back to my GFW review. Disregard him. He's doing some work back there. Some good work. God's work. We're talking about... Oh, this isn't even... G hey, you know they stopped calling themselves GFW? Now it's Impact. Anyways. Uh, first off, Eli Drake came out with Chris Adonis. Is this getting in the way of you actually working? Hey, I'm trying to edit something here, man. Okay, that's good. It's not. Um, anyways, Eli Drake comes out with Chris Adonis. They both look great. Uh, Eli Drake says uh, that John Johnny Impact is not there. Uh, he called him a 12-year-old girl. Evidently, I looked this up. Uh, this is the eighth episode that they got from the last round of tapings. And I think tapings last like six days. It's so I wanted to kind of point out the logistics of doing that is actually this is kind of impressive that they're able to schedule out and successfully execute a ton of TV episodes, two hour episodes, all in a very short span of time and actually have the story relatively flow. So whoever their like production planner guy is their production. I don't know what that would be. They do. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Everything they have to do. Anyways, he said at one point that uh, Jim Cornette was sending Eli Drake to Japan, uh, I guess, to defend his title, probably with pro wrestling Noah. I don't know who he's going to fight. I hope he's not like an 18-year-old jobber like they did with AAA. Uh, anyways, uh, Eli Drake is very happy. Chris Adonis is in there supporting his man. And Eli Drake says, you know what, Chris Adonis, I see the fire in your eye. You've got a fever, so I'm setting you up with a match right now against Garza Jr. <laughs> and Chris Adonis is like, why would you do that? Like, I'm out here to celebrate. I've got these ridiculous skinny jeans on and some designer shoes with no socks. And he's got to fight a match. Eli Drake didn't really seem to care, though. He went over to commentary. Um, anyways, they had a match. Uh, Eli Drake kept on talking about staying at the Double Tree, And he said, you know, all you ladies with double Ds, uh, go, to the, go to the Double Tree and ask for the champ. <laughs> and that was kind of funny. Um, so anyways, uh, halfway during the match, Johnny impact was shown, uh, storming, uh, around backstage. Eli Drake thought he wasn't there, but he was there. He comes running out, interferes in the match. Uh, so match is thrown out. Cornette comes down and says, Hey, you know what? You guys want to fight fine next week. Johnny impact versus, uh, Garza jr. And whoever wins is the number one contender to Eli Drake's title. So once again, Johnny Mundo gets another number one contendership match. This time it's against Garza Jr. Good for him. I don't know why Garza and Johnny Impact have such a beef, though, because Johnny Impact kept on attacking Garza, not the other way around. If I'm Garza, I'm like, dude, you just interrupted my match. What the hell? Anyways, next up, we got a package of Bobby Lashley, and then it cuts to Moose in his car looking for Bobby. Uh, he's driving to American Top Team facility, apparently, because he's mad that Bobby Lashley had him beat up like a couple episodes ago. So he's going to go confront Bobby Lashley, who has left pro wrestling to join America Top Team. Next up, we got a quick package of OVE. That's the Chris Brothers. And then we see LAX in the clubhouse. It's my favorite segments is when LAX is in their clubhouse drinking their own beer. Uh, Conan is super mad they lost. By the way, Low Key is still there in the background. He's chilling in the background, so that was kind of cool. Uh, I'm I'm curious. I, I guess he made it through all the TV tapings. I mean, there's, I think, probably three more episodes left before Bound for Glory, I think. So, I don't know. He didn't. He said, like, one line during this entire episode. Uh, OVE comes out to face some jobbers. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think they gave the jobbers names. I don't know who they are. I'm sure somebody in the comments will enlighten me into that because I don't know who, who they were. Anyways, uh, another good, I, I like OVE. I think that type of, those types of wrestlers are what Impact needs. High quality guys who have been around for a while on the indie circuit making a name for themselves. I still don't like their ring gear. I hate purple. I don't like that Jake, I think it is, wrestles with his hoodie. I don't like that. And it's partially purple. I can't stand that. I do like when they come out with those clown masks, though. That's kind of cool. Anyways, they win really easily over those jobbers. Well, like a double, they both hit a guy in the head with their knees. Um, and they get the win. Uh, next up, we have a promo for uh, Bound for Glory. Uh, then Sienna comes out. Uh, drops a pretty decent promo. I like Sienna. I like her a lot. She comes out with KM. And uh, she says, I don't know what they have planned for me at Bound for Glory. But I can only guess... 
that uh, I'm heading to the Hall of Fame, to the TNA Hall of Fame or Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, whatever it's called. Um, and she was very excited about that. Uh, Gail Kim comes out. It's always sad to me when a face cannot hang with a heel on the mic because Gail Kim, look, she's a legend. She's been doing it for a very long time. Not terribly great on the mic. Sienna is actually pretty good on the mic. Um, then Taryn Terrell comes out in her underwear. She actually drops a pretty decent promo. She's actually a pretty decent promo person. And uh, she says that she wants a title shot against Sienna. Um, uh, let's see here. And then who else comes out? Uh, oh, Allie comes out. And she says that she wants a title shot because she's been working very hard on her wrestling skills. That brings out Karen Jarrett. Says they're all going to fight in a big, giant cluster match at Bound for Glory. So it's going to be... How many people is that? Sienna, Gail Kim, Ali, Taryn Terrell, and uh, did I already say Sienna? I don't know. Five-person match at Bound for Glory. So that's good. KM was kind of cracking me up. Uh, next up, there was a Grado package where him and Joe Park uh, were sort of, the business is good for them. Grado was doing like autograph signing thing, and Joe Park was kind of pocketing most of the money and then giving a little bit to Grado. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, next up, we had a six-man match in the X Division. Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley, and Andrew Everett took on Sanjay Dutt, Matt Seidel, and Peter uh, Petey Williams. I like it. here it says Peter Williams on my notes. I my notes autocorrect a lot of weird things. I don't know why. Um, anyways, fun X Division map match. All sorts of high flying stuff. People going everywhere. Suicide dives. Lots of suplexes, superplexes, all that kind of crap. Um, but uh, Matt Seidel ended up getting the win with a shooting star press. After the match, Sanjay Dutt calls out Trevor Lee asking for another match at his X Division title. But then Petey Williams says, no, I want a match. And then Matt Seidel says, no, I want a match. So chances are they're all going to fight for the X Division title at Bound for Glory. That was the match apparently that they tried to book low key in. And he says, no, you just had me in the world title scene against... Alberto Del Rio, and now I'm not in that world title scene. Now you want to put me back down in the X Division? I'm leaving. Uh, so next up, we had a... It wasn't confirmed. I don't think it was confirmed, though, that... I, I think there was a shot after this of all the X Division guys in Cornette's office, but I don't remember there being resolution to that. Maybe I left the room for a moment, and they did get resolution. It's kind of obvious they're all going to fight for that title, though. Uh, next up, we had a short segment for Global Forged, which is their talent contest. Um, it was really short, though. They didn't really talk about much. Uh, it was usually these segments are like kind of long, but this was really short. Uh, next up, Laurel Van Ness was on a lark out in the crowd. She had on some like black leather, but she was crazy still. She has like her lipsticks all crazy. I like her a lot. I saw her in a, I saw like some highlights from a great match she had with Joey Ryan where, um, uh, his his penis uh, killed her, and they had to throw up the X, and then she goes backstage. Uh, she was Chelsea Green, and then she comes back out as Laurel Van Ness, and then she ends up beating him. It's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, she's great, but she didn't really do anything. She was just out there on a lark. Uh, next up, we had Moose at American Top Team. He goes in there. Uh, th that Lambert guy starts yelling at him, and Moose shoves him. says, get out of my way, old man. He tries to attack Lashley, but he's surrounded by like 15 guys from American Top Team. They all start beating the crap out of him, but it's like, I don't know. Whoever filmed this is not their top guy because it was a lot of it was really bad. Like the, the shots were all over the place. There were some weird slow mo shots. They threw him out of the cage. It was supposed to be really dramatic, but it was really cartoonish. Then they threw him out of the actual facility. It was kind of cheesy. But anyways, we're going to get Moose versus Lashley probably at Bound for Glory. So that's kind of cool. Uh, next up, we had the main event. This is one of the cool things about uh, Impact Wrestling is that, and I think logistically speaking, it makes sense just so they have less time to fill necessarily. They have really long main events. So this is like a 30-minute long main event between um, the, the tenuous relationship between uh, EC3 and the Cowboy James Storm versus the guys from AAA, Tahano and Phantasma. Tahano autocorrected as taxable on my on my phone. So taxable and I forget what Phantasma autocorrected to. I wonder if I can I wonder if I could do that here. Let's try let's see what Phantasma. Phantasma. Oh yeah, Fantasia. <laughs> so taxable and Fantasia took on EC3 and James Storm. Um long match, really fun. They had one of those superplex power bomb things where they 
Two of the guys go up for a superplex, and then EC3 like went underneath the balls and uh, delivered a power bomb slash superplex thing. So that was pretty cool. Um, Storm ended up eating the pin. I forget who pinned him. If it was Fantas- I think it was Fantasmo because Pagano from AAA came out and he held his leg down as either Fantasma or Taxable uh, got the pin. Um, so they cheated to win. Uh, the AAA guys go over. This is probably going to lead to some other kind of match between the AAA guys and the Impact Wrestling guys there at Bound for Glory. So that should be fun. And then finally, we had a segment back in the LAX clubhouse because Conan was super hot. That's what I forgot to mention before. Conan was super pissed that they lost their titles to OVE. Uh, So he comes back in calm and he's like, hey, listen, man, I got it all figured out. Low key, tell them what kind of match they're going to be in. And he says, 5150 Street Fight. Uh, And so I'm guessing that's like a, a match type. I guess that's the deal. Um, so we're going to get OVE versus LAX. I assume it bound for glory in a 51 50 street fight, according to Loki. So anyways, that was impact wrestling. Decent episode. Um, you know, we'll see here. The big test is going to be after, after like bound for glory. I'm going to, I'm totally going to watch bound for glory. And then after bound for glory, the next set of TV tapings, it's not going to be in the impact zone. It's going to be in some warehouse in Ottawa, I believe. Um, so, if they're able to at least sustain some semblance of storyline continuity heading into the next round of TV tapings, you know, a wise move would be to keep the title on Eli Drake, regardless of what happens at Bound for Glory. Although I get the suspicion they're going to put it on Johnny Mundo. I'm not sure how long he signed to be there. Um, but keep it on Eli Drake, a guy who's probably going to be sticking around Impact Wrestling for a little while and at least continue some storyline threads that are happening now through Bound for Glory in the next set of TV tapings. Try not to mix things up too much, um, and you should be good. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, another solid episode. I'm starting to notice the crowd being dead less because the crowd seems to be into it a bit more. Maybe this was like a fresh day of tapings. I don't know. But, uh, anyways, so, yeah, that's my Impact Wrestling review. I'm just, like, I got Larson. This is the next step to him getting into the actual episodes. He's going to be reviewing this with me. Maybe, maybe Bound for Glory. Maybe I'll get him over here for Bound for Glory. I don't know. I don't think he wants to be here anymore, and he has to be here. And he's fine relegating this to me, so I don't know. Anyways, talk to you guys later.